I want to touch on three areas for a moment, and we'll kind of start to wind this down with these series of questions. I want to talk about past, present, and the future. Um, talking about the past, if you could go back and change one thing while you owned Lionel, that if you could have a do-over, what would you do over again and what would you do differently while you own the company? Uh, if I had it to do over again, which I could not because I was doing other things with my business career, I would have liked to have been able to spend 10, 12 hours a day at Lionel shepherding it along, and I think I could have done a better job in getting the end product. But that was not in the chips. Right. I had to do it with people, and I had a good team. Mm -hmm. So, but it wasn't the same, in my opinion, without me there. Right. Uh, so that's not something I could do over again. It's something that I realized I would have been nice if I could have. Sure. Yeah. Sure, just to spend some more time there and then just right. be be more hands on. But um, you know, we were talking before we went on the air here just about you know you started the Upper Deck Trading Card Company at that point. You were you had your hands in so many different projects, so I can completely yeah. understand that idea of I wish I could spend more time at Lionel. But you were yeah. you were a busy guy at that point. Well, I also was president, chief operating officer of the Taubman Company, the mall developers. Okay. And that was a big job, believe me. Because <laughs> we were all over the United States. Wow. Developing malls. We did some, several right here in the Detroit area. Do you have any idea how many hours a week you were working at that point? Just, I mean, it definitely wasn't a 40 hour work week. No. No. <laughs> that was, it came in uh, spurts. Okay. Uh, usually I was in there from 8 o'clock until noon or 1 o'clock on Saturday. Okay. Uh, Sunday and when we were in a squeeze, okay, which wasn't too often. Uh, but the rest of the week from 8 in the morning until 5, 6, unless we had a project that I had to concentrate on. But we had a very good team at the Taubman Company. I mean, a really good team. And we had a, a, a guy who was the the founder of the company, Al Taubman, mm -hmm. who was a brilliant man, a hmm. brilliant marketing guy, uh, a just plain brilliant guy architecturally and everything else. And I think Al and I were, were a pretty good team together. I really do. And I think Al does too. Mm -hmm. he, Al is now, always has been six years older than me. Wow. So he's nine, just about to be 91. Is that right? Then? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Let's talk about the present for a moment. Now that you kind of stepped back out of, out of your, you're not in train world every day, so to speak. Now that you've been out of involvement with Lionel on a day-to-day -day basis for a while, what's your current assessment of, of what the hobby looks like? What do you like about it? And, uh, you know, where do you think things are at with the hobby? Uh, the catalog that, uh, Guggenheim, uh, and believe me, I've, uh, since Guggenheim took over, I've, I've had nothing to do with them and they've had nothing to do with me, which is fine, but I was concerned about what were they going to do with the company, obviously, uh, and they've been there, what now, three years, maybe I think four? It's, I think it's been even a little longer than that. About four. Uh, they've come a long way. I, I get the feeling that they have a team that probably knows what they're doing, even though they're not trained guys. Mm -hmm. That's my own personal opinion. Uh, the catalog they just came out with recently is a very interesting catalog. Got a lot of high end, top line end. I got a lot of repeats of types of product with different presentation mm -hmm. of the product. Uh, they, I'm not sure what they're doing. I hear that they have a huge warehouse full of their own trains that have never hit the marketplace. To me, that's frightening. 
and I don't know that that's true because I haven't seen it. But I will say this, that in my opinion, you can't flood the market because sooner or later it's going to get up, catch up with you and drown you. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I am a little bit concerned that maybe that is what's happening at this point in time. And I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, You're I, better off shorting the marketplace than you are flooding it. Interesting thoughts. Let's talk about uh, your visions for the future. And, and, you know, obviously having been at the forefront of this technology in the early 90s and, and starting to bring that in, in your wildest dreams, where do you where do you think the hobby could go in the next fifteen years? You know, where do you think the technology could take these trains? What do you think the future <laughs> looks like? First of all, the development of technologies in every arena is developing so fast nobody knows what's gonna come out tomorrow morning and trump the guy who was there. Mm -hmm. Uh Nobody has any idea. Even the big boys, I don't think they, they really know. They're doing what they can to meet what they've already got and get it in the marketplace before the somebody comes off through the, comes in through the back door and dumps a new idea on the table that's going to trump them. And now, oh boy, they have to sit back and rethink it. There's going to be a lot of rethinking going on in the electronics world. In the world of operating toy trains, it's all going to be done, in my opinion, with a microphone. Hmm. Wireless. Interesting. And you will, just like they're doing with automobiles now, with, uh, uh, what do they call that? Uh, the, the, Cirrus. The, well, Star or something. Uh, oh, OnStar. OnStar. On on with OnStar. You call OnStar, star, you say, I want to go from point A to point B. Okay. Click, 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 and you got the map in front of you, and you're all set to go. Okay. And, I mean, the technology that had to be developed to get to that point where that could be done, all through... Just sitting in the car and talking, no mic, no nothing. I mean, mm -hmm. just you're just talking to to the radio. Huh. So, what's going to happen here? That could very well happen here. Absolutely. And I think probably it will. Huh. I wonder if it'll get to a point where we can just sit here and think about, say, all right, I want my 700E Hudson to go down to this siding spot, two lumber cars, uncouple. And then return back to the yard. It, it would be interesting to see if we will get to that point. I think I think you make it a... could be, but uh, right now you would have to say to switch seven, uh, go to right hand or left hand. That's a good point. Uh, that is a possibility, but without a map of this, you know, OnStar wouldn't work unless they have the uh, yeah the GPS the, maps the, built the, into yeah, it. Yeah, and they're uh, file that they can refer to. And don't ask me how that technology works, because I don't know. <laughs> but uh, there are, and what's going to happen with the toy train industry? Uh, as situations are evolving, here in Detroit we have the M1, M1 rail coming back in along Woodward Avenue. Well, you know, those are street railroads. They're not transcontinental right. railroads. Right. Uh, I haven't seen that come out by anybody, mm -hmm. and it, it will. Mm -hmm. As it becomes an accepted type uh, mode of transportation. Hmm. So, uh, so you think there's there's still room to grow with these trains in terms of. Uh, I get the impression that you still think there's plenty of room for the technology to grow into the trains and that we haven't hit that zenith yet in terms of we can still take these trains to new places. Is that, is True. that, is that a fair assumption? I, I think that it will come to the point where you can have the TV in the front of the engine done by the manufacturer. I have uh, a converted engine, line L engine here that I put the equipment in. Oh, cool. 
and uh, we have a TV on the wall over there, and I can turn it all on and watch the train cruise around. Very neat. But there's static with that, and yeah, there, uh, there's a lot of development that can be done in that technology. Mm -hmm. But then you need a separate remote control to turn it on and off. Right. Uh, you know, at will, such as your TV. You can put it on mute, or you can click it again and take it off mute. Hmm. You can store, you know, like on TV, you can so store uh, uh, two or three programs at the same time and play them back later. Right, right. There's, I don't know where that's headed. You know, as the rest of the world continues to develop technology for, for these mainstream items like television, cars, etc., yeah. you know, it's somewhere, somewhere down the road, you know, the technology in some way, shape, or form makes it into the trains, and I, I, I think... Uh, you raise an interesting point that, you know, the idea of, of TV cameras coming back into trains, it's not a new idea. You guys did it in 1988. Right. You know, but it's its nothing that's been touched for a long time. But, you know, there there is plenty of room to upgrade that technology now and, and turn it into something that is is a hundred times better than what could have been done 25 years ago. Yeah. Well, the technology I have in my engine here uh, is a lot better than the technology we had when we did rail school uh, back at the beginning. Got it, got it. I want to <clears throat> wrap up with one last question. Um, when you are gone, how would you like people to remember your legacy in this hobby? And I know that's a, a tough question to think about, but how do you want people to see your legacy in this hobby? Uh, there's another guy in this hobby who has a fabulous uh, legacy, Joshua Lionel Cowan. I would hope that I, I don't want to compete with him, but I would hope I'd have a nice legacy, similar to what Joshua would have, has. You heard it from the man himself. You've been listening to Richard Kuhn on the Notch 6 podcast. Thank you so much for your time. It's been, a, it's been a true honor. Thank you so much. And thank you. This has been a Lionel Collectors Club of America production, where we are constantly striving to bring our members, friends, and fans the most updated information and communications for all things Lionel.